afternoon and jai hind children today we will discuss unit 9 of your english literature book raising scorpions and i hope you all can see a picture of a scorpion here man it gives me shivers because the time i downloaded this picture okay i i don't like scorpions i just want to know whether you like them or not i like snakes but i like them very much and yes the author of this extract is gerald malcolm darrell let's know about the author first okay gerald malcolm darrell was born in india in 1925 and you know he was born in jamshedpur his elder siblings are lawrence darrell leslie darrell and margaret darrell His family settled on Corfu when Darrell was a boy and he spent his time studying its wild life. He relates the experience in the trilogy beginning with my family and other animals and continuing with birds, beasts and relatives and the gardens of the gods. In his book he writes with wry humor and great perception about both the humans and animals he meets. On leaving Corfu, he returned to England to work on the staff of uh, Websnade Park as a student keeper. His adventures there are told with characteristic energy in Beasts in My Belfry. A few years later, Darrell began organizing his own animal collecting expeditions. The first to the Cameroons was followed by expeditions to Paraguay, Argentina and Sierra Leone. He recounts these experiences in a number of books including The Drunken Forest. Darrell also visited many countries while shooting various television series including an amateur naturalist. In 1958, Gerald Darrell realized a lifelong dream when he set up the Jersey Geological Park followed a few years later by the Jersey Wildlife Preservation Trust. So yes, uh, such an interesting person, and I hope you all can see this cute monkey uh, who is just sitting on, uh, you know, just behind Daryl. So I I like this picture so much. He is so affectionate towards the animals that animals are also reciprocating their love towards him. So <laughs> let's continue. So uh, yes, children, let's talk. And the first question that I would like to ask is, do you know of anyone who keeps an unusual pet? Like we all know that uh, people usually keep dogs, cats, and uh, cows, <laughs> buffaloes. But I want to know whether uh, you know of anyone who keeps an unusual pet because I know. Uh, let me share that. Uh, I had a friend and her name is Nikita and uh, she had a very cute white mouse and uh, and the name of that mouse was Stuart and she kept the name after Stuart Little I hope you might have seen that uh, uh, movie okay and uh, when uh, she used to tell me that uh, whenever it's time for her to go to office then the mouse just tries to pull the you know the sheet off her face and tries to wake her up and uh, just to feel you know a little warm the mouse used to sit behind the television <laughs> so these are the funny things that i came to know about you know mouse and uh, yes i know about one more person and trust me that lady used to keep uh, so many snakelings in a mason jar and whenever i used to go to her she uh, used to tell her tell us that uh, if you will not study then i'm going to open this mason jar and let all these snake things go out of it and then uh, it will be your responsibility okay and you know who that lady was she was my maternal grandmother and trust me people still don't believe when i share this uh, thing with them and uh, she was a very brave lady i love her so much <laughs> and uh, yes i would like to know about uh, if anyone you know knows of any person who keeps an unusual pet so and also i would like to ask that uh, do you know what exactly does a naturalist do uh, a naturalist you know children uh, 
is a person who studies plants and animals. Okay, uh, you can say zoology or uh, botany. Okay, so that's a naturalist, right? Now uh, let's talk about this thing also, children. I just want to know that uh, you know you might have seen this thought on this page number of your book and uh, the page number is uh, yeah page number is 84 now, have you seen this uh, the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated it's so interesting and you know who said that it was said by Mahatma Gandhi and this is so cool that uh, you know, these kind words are said by someone from our own country. What does this mean? Can somebody please share that? Okay, and whatever views do you have about this, please share that with me. But let me share what I think about it. You know, uh, you might have observed that uh, there are so many uh, things that we inflict upon, you know, billions of terrified animals. You know, we beat them, we cripple them, we kill them in factory farms and in slaughterhouses around the globe. And all for nothing more than just a fleeting taste of their flesh. You know, actually, what happens that uh, these words, we can say that they are very appropriate today because in light of our animal factories and slaughterhouses, where billions of animals never see the sun and die in agony, be pain, okay, piece by piece. One can only imagine what, you know, Gandhi's reaction would be to seeing uh, calves taken away from their mothers the day they are born and immobilized in wheel crates or chickens, you know, whose beaks are seared off with a hot blade to prevent them from fighting for space in tiny cramped cages. So this is like, this is not done, okay? Also, let me share, you know, what actually I think about is that, uh, first of all, you know, our true character is uh, shown to others when, you know, the way we treat the people or the animals or anything or anyone who cannot benefit us. You know, we, we are always very gentle with the people who can give us any kind of advantage or they can be of help to us but uh, you know our true character is shown when you know, the way we treat the people or animals uh, you know when they are not uh, for like they are of any kind of benefit to us so this is what I believe I just want to know what you believe children right Okay, let me give you a quick summary of this chapter because the word by word explanation and uh, I would also uh, like to share this that I'm going to uh, share the meaning of the difficult words also in a word uh, document with all of you and word by word summary will also be shared with you, right? So don't worry about that. Let me give you a quick, uh, you know, summary of this so that you will be acquainted with what the whole chapter is about. So uh, let me tell you that the passage is an extract from an autobiographical novel. And, uh, you know, the story is about a boy who finds a wall near his home. On carefully observing the wall, it's seen that uh, it is the home to many living creatures like the geckos and crane flies, whose living creatures were put to work and they were working very systematically by being divided into day and night workers and also as the hunters and the hunted. Now the author, while keenly observing all these you know, processes on the wall, observes a deadly animal and is at once tempted to take it home. The animal is a deadly scorpion and I hope you all have seen the picture that I have added in the very first slide. The author also knows well that if his mother comes to know of this, then she will be very angry on him for, you know, bringing such a poisonous and deadly creature within the precinct of the house. 
Even then, he also takes the scorpion inside the matchbox and goes home. As soon as he keeps the matchbox on the table and sets to have lunch, suddenly Larry goes for a cigarette. Larry is another, you know, member of the family. And having finished his lunch, he then finds the matchbox on the table and picks it up to the uh, to light to light the cigarette. As soon as he does that, the scorpions with its babies grab the chance of escaping and climb on Larry's arm. Panic strikes the entire house and chaos spreads in the house, right? Because Lucrezia happens to be the only stranger in the house. So the dog, Roger, takes, you know, her as responsible and bites her on the ankle. This uh, turn, you know, uh, Aglinda family and the author is made to round up all these scorpions. Uh, he then leaves them back on that same wall and retires to a hillside with Roger for the rest of the day. So, uh, the time I'm going to give you a detailed summary or explanation of the chapter, I must say. At that time, you will realize that how responsible, you know, a family member the dog was too. So, this was a quick summary of the chapter. I just want you all to read this chapter once on your own. Because the time uh, I would be explaining the chapter to you, uh, you would be able to connect with that and uh, just read about scorpions also a little. So uh, that's all, children. Thank you for this and thank you for listening to this video or watching this video. And uh, see you in our next class. So in the next class, what we are going to do is we'll talk a little about the scorpions. We'll talk a little about uh, Gerald Darrell. And uh, we'll give you a detailed explanation of the chapter, right? And uh, after that, I want you all to share how you all, you know, uh, feel about the story. Or did it change your views about the way we treat animals? Okay. So thank you so much, children. See you in our next class. Bye-bye.